Hi everyone, Doc Ron Bio again here to uh, discuss a homework helper video. In this video, we're going to discuss chromosomal changes that occur during meiosis. So I call this meiosis math. And if you're able to do this, you pretty much understand meiosis and how it plays uh, into forming gametes for genetics. So let's review the process of meiosis in humans from the chromosomal perspective. The human 2N is 46. Uh, that means there are 46 chromosomes in diploid cells. The cells that make gametes themselves are, are diploid. So we're going to start meiosis with a diploid cell with a 2N of 46. It has 46 chromosomes. Prior to division, the genetic material must be duplicated, and this happens in S phase of interphase. So I draw that going up to represent the doubling of those 46 chromosomes. If you double 46, you get 92. We call those duplicated chromosomes sister chromatids. Okay, so we have 92 sister chromatids. The first round of meiosis, now remember there are two rounds, uh, separates the homologous chromosomes. In doing this, it breaks up the tetrad of sister chromatids. Okay, so we would have a tetrad here of these duplicated sisters, and meiosis 1 is going to separate that. So I'm showing that here with the separation of homologous chromosomes. So at the end of meiosis 1, you would have two daughter cells with 46 sister chromatids that will eventually get separated. Okay, uh, So we've separated there in, in the first round of meiosis the homologous chromosomes. Uh, we've broken up the tetrad of sister chromatids. After the second round of meiosis, the sister chromatids are separated and are once again becoming uh, individual chromosomes. So here we'd see after meiosis 2, we would have individual gametes with an n value of n equals 23, again because we've separated those 46 chromatids into 23 chromosomes in each daughter cell, okay? So um, basically what I've showed you here is that, um, you know, an example of chromosome number one. So I've only shown you chromosome number one, uh, but for this process, each daughter cell would get 23 complete chromosomes. That would be one set uh, in, in these gametes. So let's take a look at some additional examples here. Uh, the Tasmanian devil has a 2N of 14. So let's draw out the process of meiosis from the chromosomal perspective uh, and see how it changes as you go through the two rounds of meiosis. Keep in mind that we must double the DNA before any cell division, including meiosis. Doubling 12 chromosomes gives us 28 sister chromatids, as can be seen here, uh, and these homologous chromosomes will essentially be doubled into these 28 sister chromatids, okay? So at prophase 1, you would have this complex scene here. It'd be the tetrad. Um, a tetrad is formed because all four chromatids for a given chromosome are brought together. Uh, after meiosis 1, the tetrad has been broken up and the homologous chromosomes have been separated. This is what I'm showing you here. We have two daughter cells after meiosis 1. Each daughter cell will have 14 sister chromatids. These chromatids represent seven pairs of eventual chromosomes. Okay. Meiosis 2 then separates the sister chromatids. Uh, so we're going to now have four daughter cells from that division in meiosis 2. The result is seven chromosomes being put into each gamete. So each, so each gamete will have an N of seven, meaning they'll have seven chromosomes in that individual haploid gamete. Keep in mind the original 2N was 14. So we can check to see that we have correct, correctly divided the genetic material. Tasmanian devil sperm will have an N of 7, meaning there are 7 chromosomes in the gamete, uh, and the 2N was originally 14. So we've done this correct, correctly. 
Uh, being able to follow the separation of genetic material into gametes is the basis of meiosis and reproduction in sexually reproductive organisms. You now have the basis to visualize this in any organism. Uh, down the road when performing genetic crosses, this will be helpful in creating haploid gametes. Okay, so literally any 2N value that a teacher gives you, you'll be able to follow it here through the process of meiosis. I hope this video helps you understand meiosis a little better. Please let me, please let me know what you think below. Uh, we'll see you next time.